uh, integer operation that could be vectorized and you could utilize all of the vector lanes. So that is important to know, right? And then other one is if, if your application is hungry and then there are you cannot just have one single thread. You need to have many different threads in your program. And so to keep all of the CPU cores and the hardware threads busy. So that's a multi-core uh, uh, aspect of it. And then you can do all of that and they all stress uh, how they are all hungry for, right? So CPUs are, can process of, they are much faster than the memory here. And so the way the CPUs mitigate that is to cache the data or cache the instructions in the caches. And so, of course, if all these threads are getting things and then you don't have good technology, then you're limited because your cache is not really uh, effective. Um, and again, the choice of software algorithms you use can also put a lot of stress on how much data you need to fetch to do the computation that you're doing. So, so you need to think about that. And then, uh, of course, if, you, if your application is processing vast amounts of data, then you're usually keeping that data in some storage here, right? So, so that also is important in terms of the what you next in the idea. So, so maybe not every application is going to be stressed on all of these dimensions, but uh, some of the large applications probably are hitting all of those things. Um, and then also developers have many different roles, right? So, so you yourself could be playing many of these roles, or maybe you have specialists in your team, in your project team. So a designer is figuring out how to architect the application. Uh, uh, and at that point, they need to do a lot of different things. And then you transition into actually writing your code. Um, and then you have to integrate all of the different code. Usually, in a real world applications, more than one person is doing it. So, so there's a lot of integration activity goes on during the coding. And then comes the stage where you actually have your application reasonably working well and it's bug free, reasonably bug free. Now it's time to tune before you want to release it. And that's when you have to either transition into doing an intensive amount of benchmarking and measuring your performance and all, uh, using your performance in the next approach to actually figure out where in the application you are you know, make some tweaks or some different code changes to get the best performance. And of course, it can be just it may not be just software changes. Sometimes you also have to recognize the best hardware you need to run the software. Right? And so that's where you need some hardware experts as well, system engineers, um, who can uh, look at it and say, this application requires these kind of ratios of the CPU versus the memory performance versus I/O performance. And so you need to get the best balanced hardware, otherwise your application may not be doing as well as you intend to do. Right? So, so these are the different roles. And so, of course, um, how do all of these get done, right? So there are different set of things, you, the activities you do, uh, we call that, I'll call that the workflows. So I'm going to give you just flavors of three different workflows related to the analysis tools, or profiling tools. So the first workflow is that you start with, if you're in the early stage in the design of your code, then you are essentially needing to figure out uh, do I, how much parallelism do I need, thread parallelism, how much vector, is my code needed to be vectorized. So we have actually tools that allow you to figure out that you need to increase the amount of multi-threadedness in your application. Then you can use the Intel Advisor product to basically just analyze your application and figure out where you could make some changes to make it more parallel. Right? Uh, and then vectorization similarly. Uh, Auto vectorization for compilers can get you a certain amount of vectorization, but if you really care about uh, getting the, the best vectorization, then we have additional analysis tools that gets you beyond where the compiler gets blocked and how the vectorization. Um, and of course, in the future, it's also going to be in terms of I want to upload it to a compute device, uh, like a GPU or an AI accelerator or a GPU. So we are going to extend our tools to support that work. So other one is the profiling workflow. So after you progress, you design your code, most of the code is ready, now it's integrated and it's reasonably working, you use other quality tools, debug and debuggers and other kind of stuff. Now you're trying to optimize your code. So some of the things you can do here is, so I would basically just want you to take two important things. One is, uh, in the past, Vitune has really focused on trying to do the more deep, challenging debug issues. 
But we also realized that we would have to do a lot of the triage work to figure out where to invest your optimization effort for finding that work. And so we are actually kind of building, and in the last couple of years, we have actually introduced snapshot tools that give you a more of a, a one-page summary. I'll show you some samples later on. Um, that allows you to quickly figure out when you go into the profile stage, which of these type of optimizations, right? When you're profiling and optimizing, you, have, you may be doing different kinds of analysis. Um, so if you're trying to improve your, uh, how fast you can get your instructions to go through the CPU uh, pipeline, then you're doing more CPU uh, oriented tuning. If you're trying to figure out that you're memory bound and you need to improve the, uh, uh, the uh, reduce the stress on the memory subsystem, then you're doing other kind of optimization. So the analysis is going to vary. And then the final workflow I'm going to show you is earlier I talked about you also need to pick your best hardware to match your application's needs. And so this is again another way where you can think of it as a configuration, you're optimizing the configuration. The optimizing the configuration can be figuring out what is the right number of uh, how many do I need a dual socket system or a single socket system or how many different cores do I need in the CPU? How much memory do I need to pair with that system and how much how many different uh, storage devices? Do I need a high capacity hard drive or uh, or maybe a high speed SSD, right? Or maybe a combination of them. Um, and again, um, so you go through that and then you can as you start to uh, change the, the relative balance of the CPU. Suppose you decided that, hey, I'm not using all of my CPU, but I'm doing memory bound, and you improve that, and suddenly maybe in, you may be CPU to bound. So you can figure out, as you start to iterate over it, you get to a stage where you see that there is a reasonably good balance between the compute, the memory, the dial. Um, at that point, you can stop, right? I mean, it's also not, Depends on what your goal is. If your goal is the most throughput, right, what's the maximum throughput I can get from a single node, then you, you may go as high as you can go and then build a very big node. Uh, if your goal is the highest density, you may not necessarily go switch all the way, right? You're figuring out how to get the best compact uh, configuration that will give you the best throughput. Uh, our best total cost of um, So, uh, then a couple of other things. I mean, since um, one of the things, if you, if you ever heard about somebody <coughs> talk about V3, it might seem like it's one tool, um, right? So, so, we have the same in USA. So, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? So, if you think that, okay, I know V3 and hard part, hard part analysis, then how am I going to solve it if I'm not this problem is V3? Uh, the, so that's one thing to keep in mind is that you just one tool is not sufficient right, for every kind of performance analysis. Uh, we don't claim we have every possible tool that you need, but we have lots of uh, very diverse set of tools even you can need. So that's why I say this is the best kept secret. This is another saying. What it means is that it's 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 very useful and very valuable, but not many people know about it. So we call it the best tech. So, so even though we built a very uh, diverse set of uh, features, and so the way you can think of Vitium is, Vitium is really not a single tool, but it's really a toolbox. Right? So you have many different analysis tools that are all integrated in Vitium in a very single familiar UI, but that's why we have lots of different analysis types. Because we could just do one profiling and then not give you a lot of options and say you just profile and then you get one kind of way to visualize your performance or profile. But since one tool is not sufficient, you really need to do a very different kind of analysis for different types of problems. But what you benefit is by having a single a familiar UI for all of those analysis tools, you still get a familiar way to navigate through your profile. So that is that. And then we also added other tools. So it's not only amplifier, we need to an amplifier. We also have advisor, which is really a design assistance tool. Uh, and then we also have better correctness checking for memory and threading gates, uh, and threading errors. 
Uh, and we also have, if anybody is doing gaming and any other PC gaming or cloud gaming, we also have uh, uh, graphics performance analyzer that lets you optimize your 3D uh, graphics pipeline. Right? So basically that's the first part of my talk. Um, so just to motivate that rather than talk, give you a lot of what the tools are, but really frame them in terms of how to uh, think of when you need to know about the tools, when you might use it. So just because you, uh, somebody says go use Vtune, you don't necessarily need to use all of the Vtune features. You just need to figure out which feature is relevant. Um, and, and also if you don't know all of the Vtune complexity, then you don't need to be intimidated because you may not need it. Depending on your role, you only need some part. Uh, and then, so I'm going to just give you a quick overview. So I, so I talked about performance profiler a lot, and then we also have advisor, which is a threading uh, and vectorization assistant in the future of the offload assistant as well uh, to the accelerators. And then we also have uh, inspector, which allows you with uh, uh, memory uh, and threading errors. Uh, so as you introduce some of these things, they become really difficult to debug, and you need tools uh, for that, especially when you introduce parallelism, it's very hard to debug using traditional debuggers. So then, um, so I'm going to go through uh, and, and talk about which set of capabilities. So, so this is primarily covers the V-team. Um, so we have single thread analysis, so we have to optimize your single thread performance, we have multi thread parallelism analysis, we also can give you the entire platform system level analysis to look at the whole system. Um, performance of its bottlenecks, um, but also we are adding new things like if you're doing any kind of uh, uh, computer acceleration using OpenCL or, uh, uh, or you're doing any video workloads, we have that support in the future and then we have switch PCM cloud. And then the more recent things are memory and storage, uh, that was the best PDK and uh, PMDK uh, support. Another thing is Vtune gives you, uh, in addition to sometimes you may be using the next product and you say, well, it has some of the same capabilities, but where we really excel ourselves is with the value added analysis we do offer. You may be able to get some of the same data. You actually don't get exactly the same data because some of the unquote data is not familiar uh, and it's not well supported out of the box from the next product. But even if you could get out of the performance data from the hardware, uh, how you actually all the back of the software and then allow you to really uh, make it work on this production strength applications that are really working on That's where we have like, XLF, like, like, and other than And then of course we support a lot of different operating systems and different hardware, so servers, client, um, and very uh, systems, um, as well as now accelerators. Uh, and then Windows UNS, 3DS. <laughs> so does it work? So, so since you're not familiar with it, so these are some of the, um, the very well-known industry um, um, uh, leaders, technology leaders, right? So they use it and what they are able to get in terms of uh, optimizing their uh, applications. These are, uh, the mileage varies, right? Especially in the AI, there is a lot of opportunity because those stacks are in the field. Vectorize and having been optimized to be able to do that, you get huge 20 ps. Uh, more in the HPC space, it's going to be a lot less because things are already pretty well optimized. But still, we got to take the time. We have a new CPU uh, generation, people are using it. Um, so, so, next, I have a few points to give you a flavor of what each of is. And if you're interested, there are um, so, so first thing we do is start on here. So you have essentially, if you're starting with Vtune, uh, if, if you're familiar with it and you felt intimidated in the past, we try to make it easier. So, so what kind of analysis do I need to do? And so we, we essentially give you some kind of roadmap and tell you, okay, so how do we, what analysis, how do I choose my analysis? And so we do this hotspot analysis and then you pick, uh, Think about what it's supposed to do. Right? So, anything similarly, we're really trying to tune for a specific micro architecture. 
then so why you should use that particular analysis like when you make your really tiny tune for your multi-carrier or multi-core application then you go into the target and see if everything is working from that part aspect. And then you also have a lot of these hardware specific analysis like the black one profiler or the so, so earlier I talked about VTune has started to introduce snapshots, and so I want to just quickly point out here. So if you actually don't want to actually spend any time to learn a new tool, so these don't require any learning, right? So these are we will uh, profile your application, very really lightweight profile. Uh, you don't need to install anything. You just download something, you run it and it'll generate you a one page. And that report will something look like the application performance snapshot. It tells you how long your application took, how many you know, flops uh, it uh, speed it had, and then what is the CPU utilization, and then what percentage of the time it was memory bound, what percentage of the time it was uh, IO bound, some of it is not here. Um, so you get quickly an idea that it's, and then we'll give you hints. We think that if it is out of the ordinary because we have some heuristics to tell us what's the right, then it is too long. And then we'll give you that perhaps you need to look at this and do a deeper analysis. So this is not going to immediately tell you where the problem is, but it's going to tell you what kind of problem you may have and whether it is worthwhile to do a deeper analysis. And then if so, then which part of the beach on deeper analysis you need to take? So this is, uh, I think we introduced it two years ago. Um, and it is not that well publicized and, and so and also not that well integrated because we wanted to make it so easy to actually just download from the web and run it. But it is also there in which you need to download it. And then we also have some specialized things. If you have an HPC workload like an MPI snapshot, we see more of your uh, MPI application code and then the storage snapshot. So this is what we want to if you have not actually started with Vtune, I recommend you start here. Right? Because it can give you the easy ramp into, okay, how do I then transition to using Vtune? And then the next one is the Vtune platform profiler. So the way you can probably analogy is if the snapshot is more like your the, the widest angle lens, if you, you know photography, right? So you wanted to capture a camera so snapshot gives you that in one screen, you get a full picture of the entire application. But it's not very detailed. Um, but then you get to the Vtune platform profiler, it is your uh, in between. Whereas Vtune deeper analysis tend to be your telephoto lenses. Because that gives you a very accurate profile at a very detailed level. So this one is in between, and what this can help you is, so you can actually start with something like this. It'll give you your complete server topology, and then you can actually double click by navigating to the server topology and figure out which part of the, your server or hardware platform is the one that's bottom end, right? So if, if it is a CPU, if it's computer, you can also figure out which part, which ports are the ones. Because when you actually double click on the socket, they'll give you a, another map of all the ports in the socket, and then you have to see which of them are utilized the highest. And, which are. Uh, and then you can go to uh, different metrics for any of the uh, uh, deep dive that you do, you get a number of performance metrics for that particular part of the platform. So quickly you can get to figure out, okay, am I having really, you got a memory bound, and in, you start to say, okay, am I really memory bound and it's uniform across all of the memory channels? Or just a memory bound, but only one channel is the one that I'm having the code on. Why would that happen? I mean, usually it shouldn't happen, um, but workloads are crazy. Sometimes that happens, right? And then you quickly can find out that, okay, there's something in the application that it is actually the virtual uh, memory management of the system is not working as well, right? So, so you get to know that. And then there's micro-architecture analysis, it's very pictorial, it gets to tell you actually what type of problem you have. So this is if you're tuning for a particular CPU microarchitecture. And you can look at your workload and then pick it and tell you, okay, you're front-end bound. You may not know what a front-end bound is if you're not a CPU architect, but you can just quickly get a read out about what that might mean. It may mean uh, that you're not able to fetch the instructions fast enough. Uh, 
So what you really want is the retiree to be your the largest part, right? Because that means you're getting product instructions are getting executed and they're completing. So if you if any of the red parts or the gray parts, those are the basic cycles. And then advisor. So here is the advisor. So quickly to make a point here earlier when I talked about threading and vectorization together very important. So you look at it, the serial performance here is, is your baseline, right? So think of it as just the red line. And then if you just credit the application but you didn't vectorize your call, you're getting certain speed up, but you're not getting a huge amount of speed up relative to what the hardware can cover. And then if you also did vectorization, suddenly you see the amount of scale. So you're getting 130x compared to the baseline from 2010. So, so that's why it's very important to modernize your code and not necessarily modernize for a specific architecture instance of the CPU, right? You want to be having, basically you want to pick things like TVB which have to uh, automatically figure out how many threads you need to spawn. If you actually hard coded the number of threads and the next generation comes and then there are more calls in here. And then, uh, so the uh, other thing I wanted to point out here is you, if you use Intel compiler or uh, even GCC, you can get uh, compiler optimization reports that tell you why a particular loop is not vectorized. And then it's very useful because you don't need to go through 100 pages of the compiler output to figure that out. You can quickly look at the top loops, the loops that take the most amount of time, and then you can figure out if they're vectorized or not. Uh, and then comes the Intel uh, roof line. This allows you another way of looking at if you have a lot of uh, uh, compute loops. Uh, how do they, what are they limited by? Are they getting, using all of the automatic uh, units that is there on the CPU or are they limited by not getting enough data, right? So you know which optimization to do. You're really at the ceiling for the roof, which means that you print uh, do any faster than that, so you need to look at the number of And then finally, the, the, the inspector will give you a quick, easy to use uh, error reports, and then you can go and figure out why your application has memory leak So finally, I'm just about to wrap up. So it's, uh, you can download a free copy, and also we are having hands-on workshop tomorrow, if any of you are attending that, and you haven't already install with you. Please download a copy or meet one of us and I think we have uh, some USB drives where you can quickly grab it and install. Um, and for the next two days we have a number of talks, so with more in-depth uh, um, discussion and tools. And then key takeaways are performance is many things, people play many different roles during the doctor and they do many different workflows, different tasks during that time. And so what we need is a rich a tool set that is extensive. So if you're building a house, you're not just taking a hammer and building a house, right? You need a rich set of tools. And we are take, we already built a rich set of tools, but by no means we think we are complete and we are still continuing to right? And then so this is my view of how a very simplified cartoonish view of telling how um, performance works in real life, right? So engineering performance engineering. But I also want to hear from you because you guys are experts and this is what you're doing day and day. And so we want to know about your stories offline. Thank you.